the city warren. The popular two-term mayor of Newton ran John Curry's Massachusetts office back when he was a senator, a job Warren left to serve in the Iraq war. Warren announced a few months ago he won't be running again for mayor, increasing speculation that it's the governor's office he's after next. Current governor Charlie Baker's approval ratings, though down a tad as of later, still solid at 59 percent. But a new Mass Inc. poll finds how he's dealing with President Trump could be a weak spot. 37 percent of registered voters in the state feel he's reacting appropriately to the president. Another 18 that he's too critical and 26 that he's not critical enough to find out where Seti Warren belongs in that poll. He joins me now. Mr. Mayor, it's good to see you. Thanks Great so much for being here. Great to see you. When are you announcing that you're running? Well, I'm seriously looking at this race. I'm taking the next three or four months listening to people moving around the state. Public service has been in my life, my entire life, from, as you mentioned, uh, service in the Iraq War, uh, serving as mayor, uh, dealing with tough budget conditions when I first came into the mayor's job and delivering services. So I'm going to listen very, very closely uh, to folks and I'm going to make some introductions. And uh, So probably the summer? Probably in the next three to four months. Okay. You know, uh, you've been mayor for obviously all of Charlie Baker's term as governor. I Googled today you and him. There's very little criticism of Baker mm -hmm by you. So uh, were you just silent by choice because you didn't have a problem and all of a sudden you think there is a problem? What's your issue with uh, Baker continuing office? Well, this is really a Beacon Hill question Maybe for me. What? We, well, here's the deal. We've got a 2.8 percent unemployment rate. We've got economic growth, but yet we have a budget crisis right now. We can't seem to balance our budget. We're using one-time revenue to keep the budget afloat. We're not being transparent about where the expenditures are going. Some Democrats on Beacon Hill don't have the courage to say we need more revenue. Some Republicans on Beacon Hill won't take the heat for making the cuts. We just had cuts in the, in the budget. When I was mayor, as I mentioned, I inherited a $40 million structural deficit, no rainy day fund. In the eight years since I've become mayor, we've eliminated that deficit. And I had the courage, and we eliminated that deficit by finding savings where we could. And I also had the courage to put a tax increase on the ballot when I was running for election Did you, to build schools and add teachers and invest in public as you, safety. As you know, so we Mayor need to have the same kind of uh, uh, transparency. Deval Patrick in his last year was relying on one-time revenues much, much more than Charlie right. Baker. Did you criticize Governor Patrick for relying on those revenues? No. Well, look, you know, when Governor Patrick was in office, we were coming out of a recession. We had higher unemployment rate. We've got a low unemployment rate now. We've got booming economy in certain sectors of Massachusetts right now, but yet we can't balance our budget. So what challenges we can't do you think? Things that what matter. challenges do you think? I read you use the word challenges, serious challenges. That the uh, so what are a couple of the challenges where you think Baker is falling short that you could address better? Well, you know, I've been out and around the Commonwealth uh, listening to people. Here's what I'm hearing. People can't make ends meet on the salary that they have. People are trying to figure out how they're going to send their kids to college right here in the state mm -hmm. to make sure it's affordable. People can't move around the state because we have an antiquated tr transportation system. We don't have enough housing. We don't have uh, the kind of early education system that we need to put kids on the right path. Well, let's, can we and we're not funding, and we're not funding the K through 12 system right now. He's about to uh, uh, start a billion dollar extension of the Green Line, uh, assuming mm -hmm. the feds come through. Spent $87 million on winterization of uh, the T after the disaster of two years ago. We have the best schools, K through 12, in the nation, according to tests. So I, I'm, I, I'm not clear. And you also, actually, this is another thing. I, I, something that's really high profile, I know, on Baker's list, has been uh, uh, dealing with the opioid crisis. You criticized him for what about that recently? Yeah, well, this goes back to the, the expenditures of the budget. Okay. So, again, we're, we have a structural deficit and we're using one-time revenue. At the same time, what I noted was that there were nine C cuts in the middle of the year yeah. around opioid uh, addiction funding uh, for the CAPE. This is not acceptable at a time when we have a raging uh, epidemic in, here in the state of But I don't have the precise number in my head, but at the same time that he cut, it did cut, you're right, opioid money for right. the CAPE, in the overall budget, he increased it by more than $15 million over the prior year. So the net increase was actually huge, comparatively speaking, even with that cut. That's true, right? All true. Uh, but again, this isn't about one person. This I is see. about the people on the ground. And I keep hearing from folks, they're trying to take care of their sons and daughters who are struggling from this addiction. They can't not just find the bed to make sure there's detox, right. but long-term care. So we need that kind of investment. When you mentioned Beacon Hills, the prize, I've read that you were against the huge legislative pay raise. But 
Baker vetoed it. It was your fellow Democrats who not only voted for this, I think, obscene increase, and I believe they should get a raise, but not like this, uh, and overrode his veto. So the problem is not Baker on that. The problem is is the leg- is the Democratic legislature, yes? Well, it's a Beacon Hill problem, right? I, but Democrats are the ones who did and it. And it was wrong. And it was wrong. Um, the process was wrong. It wasn't transparent. I believe in pe- folks getting raises as well. But look, this goes back to a you know, decades-old problem. This goes beyond Governor Baker. It's how Beacon Hill is not addressing the needs of people on the ground. As a mayor, I have to make sure I deliver strong public safety, teachers in the classroom, so that we, mm-hmm. one of the successful things we've done because of that modest tax increase that I asked in 2013, uh, we were able to add teachers, reduce the achievement gap. We're buying, building five new schools in the next uh, six I years. I want to ask you about taxes. Before I do sure. that, what, what you were criticizing this 40% increase for leaders, you took like a 30% increase yourself. Did you not? So, uh, from your alderman there, yes? So back in 2005, uh, there was a separate commission by the alderman at that time to recommend that the mayor take a pay increase. Sort of like what into, the legislature yeah, had. Yeah, in 2009, uh, when I ran for mayor, this issue was discussed. I actually said, and very publicly on the record, that I'm not going to accept that increase until we fix the budget crisis in Newton. Um, In 2012, after we got the budget fixed, I accepted the increase from the city council. Look, the legislature needs to do the same thing. We have to make sure we're not using one-time revenue to balance this budget, have cuts mid-year like we did this year, and address the needs of people in the state of Massachusetts. So would it be fair to say, Mayor, that you think, when you say the problem is Beacon Hill, that the problem is as much the Democrats in control of the legislature as it is, in your estimation, the Republican governor it's, it's in the a, corner it, office? It's a Democrat and Republican uh, question. It's both. It's nonpartisan. It's the way Beacon Hill has operated. Um, I'm for, for the millionaire's tax. People making $20,000 a week can afford, to pay, can afford to pay a little bit more. To Should we have a broad tax increase in, before the millionaire's tax? Not even voted on until 2018. Should we have another broad-based tax I think, to meet the needs you're talking about? I think we should look at a variety of different ways we can raise revenue. But I'm for the millionaire's tax. As I said, $20,000 a week uh, people are making can afford to make, uh, make an investment in uh, education, transportation, early childhood, um, and infrastructure here in the state. If you do Badly this, we'll needed. see you a lot, correct? If Badly you, needed. If you end up running, we'll see Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Nice to see you, Mary. Good Mark. to see you, Good too. Luck. Yeah, What's your website? You. Do you have one? Oh, you're not running yet. There's no <laughs> website yet. In any case, you almost answered, but good to see you.